Hello, I'm Luke from Smallfish. Today I'll do a, an anim graph breakdown. What is the anim graph? What, what does it do? Why do we use it over setting animations in code? What am I looking at? What is this mess on my screen of Windows? I, I don't want to touch this. No, it's easy. Once you understand it, it's very simple. So, obviously the ways we can deal with animation in, in the game is uh, setting animation clips via code or having the uh, anim graph automatically deal with the pose every frame and change the animation that way rather than the game code doing it for you. And this is done every frame. It goes through up the tree that it needs to go to the pose and it'll go back down again and each node will slightly alter the pose so you'll have like a running animation it'll add something on top like a blinking animation it will add like eyes darting around and all that till it hits the final pose here and it'll output that pose for the frame and that's just what it does each of these either add something on top like this one gets your animation up to that point and adds eye darts that make your eyes dart around a little bit and then it spits out to the end and that's now got eye darts on top and that's just how it works each node either will add something on top of the current animation or it will change the path it's going to so for example this will say we're holding a weapon or we're not and then all the way to the end usually the end nodes will be your base animations like walking running walk run crouch walk the very left ones are usually your base like animation to make the main pose and then the further down you go it will be minor things like arms and then blinking it will get smaller smaller things that add more and more details there's also doing IK like snapping the feet to the ground which is usually done a lot later on I think around here IK is obviously it's procedural animation that isn't driven by any animation clips it's just done procedurally and any nodes that have a little arrow you can go into to do more advanced stuff like the, uh, the walking and stuff, this basically just deals with uh, what animation should we play depending on what direction we're going and it blends between them and that's just like what that main node workspace is for and how the actual node workspace works and why we use it because blending animations is so powerful for getting like multiple results from like a limited amount of clips so now I've covered that let's go through all these windows around the edge there's a few that I've probably got hidden yep so, preview. You can just change your preview, view your model. Uh, most importantly is this gear cog, where you can... I'll quickly open this to explain what you need to do first. So, first, add your random graph in here, in this little section here. You can Then you can click edit to go back into it. Uh, now that's hooked up, you can do the magic wand to automatically add your model, like so. All these reference it. Or you can manually add it. And that's how you get access to your animation clips and preview it. Bone Merge can add clothes or weapons to see how they act with the animation graph as well, how the animations and poses affect them. I'll skip main inputs to look over parameters because it won't make sense otherwise, so we'll go on to motors. Motors deal with how we get our inputs uh, each time they're updated, like before the nodes are processed every frame or whatever. So player inputs is forwards, back, up, left, all these sort of varied amount of uh, inputs. And then path is just following a path so like an NPC. most of the time you just do player input if it's a player done now parameters so all the poses and stuff are done internally with the anim graph and spat out at the end to the engine but let's say we want to have something in game that says hey we're holding a rifle now we want a rifle pose we'll need to set up a parameter that says what state we're in are we, are we holding nothing we're holding the rifle shotgun whatever we do that parameters. Parameters allow the one thing that code can actually change. You can you can set parameters, the values of the parameters via code, and then nodes can reference them parameters. And that's the way you can communicate between them. You don't communicate directly. Use parameters as like this buffer. Although the nodes cannot change the parameter, the code can though. So it's it's more so like a one-way process. Code to parameters and then parameters referenced by the nodes. Obviously got multiple types. See them all here. I recommend just opening the uh, system anim graph and just looking at all of them and understanding what they do. Main inputs, I said I'll cover this. There's a thing from previous Source games, Source 2 games, where they realised most anim graphs had the same parameters they were continually adding over and over. So for them, it was easier just to hard code certain parameters into the actual uh, anim graph itself. We don't use these in, uh, in Sandbox, at least as far as I can tell, I've never seen it used. Just ignore them. 
That's all I can say at this point, just ignore them. Uh, they can be annoying since in certain nodes that reference, let's say, uh, what is controlling something, like a parameter. You got all these annoying things. Ignore them. Just, <laughs> just use parameters for everything, basically. That's all I can say, main and buts, just ignore them. Activity settings, I think are also useless. I've never seen anyone use these. There's something to do with animations in Model Doc. I have looked into it, but I forgot it because how useless it was, so I'd ignore it. <laughs> That's all I can say. Tags, so parameters, like I've said, are allow code to communicate into the animograph, but nodes cannot alter the parameters. So how are they meant to communicate with each other if you need them to? Use tags. Tags are internal, like internal parameters that allow nodes to communicate with each other. And it basically says what state you're in within the anim graph. Um, that's what tags are. You got multiple different kinds, like for particles, audio, and all this stuff. I've, when I've tried to use them, they've not worked. <laughs> or they might have worked, but they didn't work properly, so I've just completely forgot about it because there's no point. It's easier to uh, hook up particles or audio and stuff to animations in Model Doc instead. Next is the animation clips, so this allows you an easy way of viewing the animation clips on this model and select the one you need. And that's literally why it is, just a preview window. Now you'll have seen me clicking properties a lot. Properties has got three main cool things about it, so every time you select something like parameter, tag, clip, node, it'll either have the values that's happening on them or most commonly values it can change, so like the max and min values for a parameter if it's automatically reset at the end of each tick. So it's, let's say the default value of this is zero, you set it to 100. The next tick, it'll automatically go back to zero. All this sort of stuff, how it's networked. Yeah, so all this sort of cool stuff. Obviously, if you select something, you have no idea what it is. If you don't have the little thing down here, you have to drag this up and it gives you a little description section. Now you can see, oh, a float is a parameter that is a number that can have a decimal value. Well, the more you know. Obviously everything has this. Also, properties, if you click a property, either you hover over and it pops up, or you click it and it will come down here. You do get the rare instance where uh, you click something and it's, it's just got nothing, which is a bit of a bummer, but most things will have uh, descriptions on them, including nodes. Uh, nodes have their descriptions and their parameters will also, well, well, properties, I mean, will have descriptions too. Also, you'll see occasionally if you click like, um, certain nodes like uh, this it'll come up with a little section down in it's more specified for that node animations will also have that to show their animation it's just a nice little preview to be able to see what's going on inside the node or what the node's doing which is cool uh, now let's look at this console useless close it never used it never seemed to do anything useful <laughs> so all i can say a lot of i close a lot of uh, windows because some of them you, you use once and never touch again, or you don't use at all and just close them, in my opinion. Because you want to make the most use of this space as possible, since it can become a pain when you've got loads of parameters or loads of nodes and all this sort of stuff. Now, let's go to the most useful thing. Let's say if you want to test your model now, or you want to test something while you're making changes. Wow, well, we're going to have to beat up the game, we're going to have to code something to change the parameters. And, ugh, what a slug. Okay, click this man. Don't have to do that. You can just change all the parameters as if you're the code. Let's say, oh, well, um, I'm going to duck now. Ooh, ooh, you can see up here, it's changing. Uh, cool thing as well is you'll see this blue line. This is the uh, nodes that are affecting your pose. You can say, see them changing in real time. And one cool thing is while you're clicking along that well, or only the nodes that are blue are affecting the pose. All the grey ones are not affecting anything. And while you're doing that, you can click uh, certain sections of these nodes, like here, and you can see what pose, what what they're doing to the actual pose. So you see these two are being done. But then as it goes down, they're combined, and you can slowly click through this blue line and see how each node is affecting the uh, final pose until you hit the final node, and you can see the final pose. Well, before you can see the final pose. And that is so, so useful to debug what's going on and where stuff's going wrong. So let's say you had a crouching animation like this. For some reason, your arms are like sticking upwards in the air. It's like, where's that gone wrong? Slowly click along the blue line backwards. Like, let's say if you, I want to see where, where the hell are these eyes being done? Because 
I don't think that's in the uh, base animation. Let's just slowly click up the little tree, and eventually you'll you'll see the eyes being done. And if we go up here, oh, uh, we see down here the eyes were affected down here, and that's how you can view how stuff's changing. Also, obviously, while also being able to affect the parameters and change the pose in real time, you can see the tags being activated in real time. So you can see we're now crouching, but if I undo this, we're no longer crouching. This is so powerful to test stuff and debug everything, and I recommend it so much. If you're learning how to do the anim graph, I really, really, really recommend open the citizen, open any more complex anim graph, click the blue man, and just mess with the parameters and slowly click along the blue line figure out how nodes are affecting the final pose and see how the final even just starting from um, one of these sections and slowly going up and see how how is that affecting the final outputted pose because it's so useful to see how stuff is layered up and get a much better understanding of how the yam graph is working in real time and that's my only thing i can say or just create your own yam graph put your model in and just hook up loads of nodes in a string play and then just click along and figure out where is these poses getting combined, how they're getting combined, why is it going wrong. So that's my best recommendation. Lastly, if you need any help with any Amograph stuff, please just come into the Smallfish Discord, which will probably be linked below. Come to our help channel, ask in there. Me, Grodbert, any other people will try and do our best to help. Or probably the even better option is uh, the Amograph channel in the Sandbox Discord. Go in there, there's lots of people who are willing to help. If it's something even more confusing than anything, Max will come in, the uh, animator, and he'll usually know somehow, because he, he knows loads about the anagraph. But yeah, everyone's always willing to help, so don't be daunted or scared by the anagraph, just feel free to come to any of us. Um, hopefully this video has given you a massive boost of help to understand everything, and go ahead, just use it. Figure it out. Have fun. Pretty easy, pretty simple. <laughs>